It's the fourth day of 2024 and the wrestling world continues to be crazy. I didn't expect to wake up today to see that Dolph Ziggler has joined New Japan, but here we are. He showed up and had a brawl with David Finley. The two continue their brawl during the post-conference. Things were hectic. Nick Nemeth has his eyes set on the Global Heavyweight Championship. I think he's going to do great things in New Japan. His time in WWE needed to come to an end, especially after being there for almost two decades. The company was wasn't really using him too much and he didn't get that much TV time so I think this will be very good for Nick I love how all the free agents are showing up around the world in so many different promotions things are going crazy in 2024 it's only been four days but I already think this might be the craziest year of wrestling just based off these four days one free agent that we thought was going to show up to AEW Dynamite but didn't was Mercedes Money most sources expected her to make her debut last night and now I don't know if she's going to pop up in AEW there are even a few other things that make me think she might be ending up coming back to WWE as Sasha Banks. Her profile page on WWE.com has been recently updated just 24 hours ago. The same thing happened to CM Punk prior to his return. The IWC has been buzzing about this last night, and on top of that, her song Money is no longer available on Apple Music. These little details got me thinking she might be coming back to WWE. It would make sense since WWE is going to try everything in their power to throw us off like they did with CM Punk, so we all get shot. This year's Road to WrestleMania is absolutely insane, and to make things even more crazy, Boozer said this about Mercedes. I mean, Vince wasn't making that much money as an employee. She wants Vincent Kenny McMahon money, and I think she got that VKM paycheck. This means she most likely signed a huge deal. We don't know if that's with AEW or WWE just yet, but what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Wherever it is, it's nice to see that Mercedes got paid. WWE recently announced that Money in the Bank this year will take place in Toronto. That's pretty cool. The trend of PLEs happening in countries outside of the US is nice because those crowds are so much better and you love to see the expansion around the world. Hopefully Triple H gets it right with the Money in the Bank winner this year because so far it's looking like he made two mistakes in the last couple of years. While this news is exciting, this is reportedly the huge announcement that Triple H had today and that's kind of disappointing. I don't think he needed to gas it up like this. Like you really didn't need to say anything about it. It feels like when Tony Khan, he set up every small announcement a few years ago. A lot of people didn't like that. I wasn't a fan and I'm not a fan of this with Triple H. What I am a fan of is Jade Cargill. There's been some new footage released of her training at the dungeon. Natalia posted it on her IG. She's looking really sharp in that ring. And I think once she makes her debut, she'll be ready to put on some great matches in the women's division. If I had to guess, she's debuting at the Royal Rumble. And I think there's a good possibility that she wins and even fights Rhea Ripley for the world championship on one of the nights of WrestleMania. If not, I do think that Jade will have a lot of eliminations in the Rumble match itself if she doesn't win. In other news, Russell Votes is reporting that WWE is going to celebrate Hulk Hogan this month. The tweet reads, WWE plans to celebrate the 40th anniversary of Hulkamania this month with various new merchandise items and collectibles for Hulk Hogan. I'm told an appearance by Hogan is not out of question, but also it is not planned as of now. The recognized start of Hulkamania has been generally around when he defeated the Iron Sheik for his first WWE Championship on January 23rd, 1984. God damn, this man is old. I know there's a ton of you that probably don't want to see Hulk Hogan, but I'm sure it doesn't matter to WWE. If they're making money, they're going to do it. So I do see them promoting this. And you know what? It's it's whatever. I don't really care for Hogan. I'm not going to buy a shirt, but whatever. Anyways, I'm sure you've seen this spot by now, but I want to show it again because this is just unbelievable. <laughs> Joaquin Wilde might have given us the best spot of the year with that already, only three days into January. He even put out a post about it on Facebook saying this, LOL, when I said I wanted to do this dive last night, I told dudes to stand 20 feet from the ring. Nobody believed that I could make that jump. Shawn Michaels himself had to talk to me and make sure I wasn't crazy. They even had me do it in rehearsal to prove it. I cleared the 20 feet in rehearsal, but it was nowhere near as pretty or spectacular as the one I did on the show. Adrenaline is powerful. What can I say? 
This is probably the coolest move I've done in my career, and the attention is getting is pretty cool and surprising. This was indeed a thing of beauty, and it will be remembered for years to come, so kudos to you. And to end this video, I want to show a few clips of Edge from the Not Sam Wrestling Podcast. I highly recommend that you watch it because these two hours are a great listen and you learn a lot of new things about Edge, his time in WWE, and even his time in, in, in AEW. Anyways, Edge spoke about the initial version of the Judgment Day. Spoiler alert, it does not sound good. Actually, it sounds terrible. Thankfully, they didn't go through with it. Let's roll the footage. At one point, it was talked about a, you know, a cauldron with bubbling black fluid, and I'm holding a pitchfork, and I was like, whoa, I don't <laughs> want to do that. Yeah. Because that's not going to work. Right. Um, and then there was one week, he, they, they wanted us to float to the ring. I was like, what? And they said, well, no, we'll put it on like a dolly. <laughs> and I got to the back, I was like, yeah, I don't think that entrance works, guys. But it's, it's that, okay, I'll give it a shot. Sure. But I'll also be the first one to tell you, that didn't work. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, like I said, WWE didn't go down this route because I don't think the Judgment Day would have survived long if this happened. Honestly, they probably would have been so uh, hated amongst the WWE fans online and in the crowds. Like I said, it would be done. And that would suck because you got Dom, Damian Priest, Rhea Ripley, and Finn Balor thriving right now. The next clip is Edge talking about why Finn Balor quickly turned on him, which, you know, it was never supposed to happen in the first place that quickly, but some injuries from other top stars led to it. So let's roll that clip. So initially, it was brought to me like, hey, we want to kind of start a new brood or something that feels somewhat like that. I'm like, who would it be? I was like, oh, Ripley and Priest. We want it to be four. I was like, Bauer. But but that all got sped up again because of the injuries. Right. So Cody's down, torn peck. Randy's down back. Right. Okay. We were going to have Balor cause the, uh, the mutiny a year later. Mm -hmm. That got sped up to tomorrow. <laughs> like, right. Okay. Yeah. I get it. I get it. Yeah. That is just wild. I really wonder how things would have been in the Judgment Day had those injuries not happened because I, I did think it was strange that Edge just went heel, then two months later, Finn Balor turned on him. I think it would have turned out even better, but it is what it is right now. I'm happy with the Judgment Day and I'm loving the new R-Truth stuff. Anyways, the last clip is Edge talking about how much longer he has in this business. It's not too long, but it seems like he made the right decision by going to AEW because he does seem very happy. Let's roll that clip for a limited time because it is all limited even though it's been four or five years back now it's not like i got another four or five in front of me i know i don't it, it, we're looking at like a two-year window here to be able to get as much done as i can get done tell as many stories as i can try and help talent along the way with that i i just i wanted to be able to do as much as i could while i could mm -hmm. and that felt like the place i was going to be able going to be allowed to do that and that's when it it really I was like that's where I gotta go and 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 lyric she just said you're gonna have more fun with him mm -hmm. it's like you're absolutely right it's your best friend I am. Anyways, that is it for the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope y'all enjoyed. If you did, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. And I'll see you all in the next video.